Okay, my apologies. I think I got a little mix between 9.2 and 9.3. So at the end of that last video, I said the next item was the review because I thought I was recording 9.3, but I was only recording 9.2. So we have this section, 9.3, with 15 questions, and then we'll cover the review for chapters eight and nine. So for number one, it says find the range for the group of data. So the range is basically the highest data value minus the lowest data value. So in this case, that would be 10 minus six, which is four. For number two, the range for this data group would be 21 minus 14, which is seven. For number three, the range for the group of data items would be 23 minus 21. And that value would be two. For number four, a group of data items and their mean are given. And so here's the data items and there's the mean. It says find the deviation from the mean for each of the following data items. Find the sum of the deviations in part A. So the deviation basically means your data value minus the mean. So I took 30 data value minus the 120 is negative 90. 50 minus 120 is negative 70. 70 minus 120 is negative 50. 120 minus 120 is zero. 180 minus 120 is 60, and, one, and 270 minus 120 is 150. Then part B told me to find the sum, so I added all of these numbers together, and it ended up being zero. For part B, it's, or for number five, it's the exact same thing, just different data, different mean, but the same process. So your data value minus your mean of 166 for each of these, and then you add up all these values together and it turned out to be zero again. Now number six says, find the standard deviation for the group of data items. So the standard deviation, I'm gonna start using these symbols because these are the symbols that they use in the um, note sheet, okay? So the mean, this little sigma, that's a sigma symbol, the symbol like that, that's called sigma. And what it means is it means the sum. So you're going to add all of the x's together. Now this is the number of data. Okay. So in some cases, when you're doing a frequency distribution, that's the frequency sum. When it's just a list of data, you just count them, right, to find the n. But when it's in a frequency distribution, you do have to add up the, the frequencies. Now, if you wanna know the frequency mean, you take those products and then you divide it by the sum, the frequency sum, okay? Um, Mid-range, here's the formula that I was using in the past video. Range is the formula that I just used for the first few problems. And then here you get to standard deviation. So X bar, is the symbol that they use to represent the mean or the average. Okay, so what you do is you take your data value minus the mean, which was what we were doing in that chart, and you're gonna square each of those values, and then you're gonna add all of those squared values together. Once you do that, you're gonna divide by the number of data minus one, okay? And then once you do that, you're gonna take the square root of all of that. And so that would give you what is called the standard deviation. Now, um, so when I'm doing this, I'm starting to use these symbols here. So X bar, I need to find the mean. In order for me to find the standard deviation, I know what my data values are. They're these values, that's not the problem. What I wanna find is what is X bar? What is the mean? Okay, I could even tell you what n is. n is one, two, three, four, five. There's five data, so n is five. But I need to find x bar. So x bar is gonna be the sum of all the x, the data values over n. In this case, it's the sum of nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 over the number of numbers, which is five. So that calculates out to be 11. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the difference between the data value minus the mean. So basically nine minus this 11 is negative two, 10 minus 11 is negative one, 11 minus 11 is zero, 
12 minus 11 is one, 13 minus 11 is two. Then I need to square each of these and sum them up together. So I squared each one and then I added them all together. Now this would be positive four plus positive one plus zero plus positive one plus positive four, which turns out to be 10. So to calculate the standard deviation, we're gonna do the square root of that 10 over n minus one. Since n is, four, is five, if I take away one, I get four in this denominator. And I did type this whole thing in the calculator, but make sure that when you type it in, you type in the square root first and then the fraction on the inside because that square root bar does need to go all the way down to the bottom of the fraction. Um, and I'm making that a point because that's the only way you'll get the correct value. If you just do fraction and then square root of 10 and then put the four at the bottom, you will get a totally different number, okay? So make sure that your fraction is inside the square root. And to do that, you hit the square root button first and then the fraction button. Um, and that is the standard deviation. So it did ask me to round to two decimal places. So I went ahead and I rounded it. Um, the one did not change the eight, so it stayed at 1.58. Now number seven says, find the standard deviation for the following group of data items. Um, so it's the same process. I just kind of tried to put it all together. So I found the mean, I added all the data and divided by the number of data, which was four, and I got this. Then I took each one of these values and subtracted this mean. So that is where I got these numbers in the parentheses. Then I squared each of those numbers and then I summed them together. I added them together. All over n, which was four minus one. I literally typed in this whole thing in the calculator exactly the way it looks on the paper, and it gave me this decimal. But since I have to round my answer to two decimal places, um, this seven will change that seven to an eight. And so then the standard deviation becomes 5.38. For number eight, it's the same thing. It's just more practice. It's all repetition so that we can get the hang of this, okay? So again, we're finding our mean. So add up all these values, divide by six num number of data. We get 13 as the average. Subtract 13 from every single one of these. We get negative two, negative two, one, 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 one. Square them all, add up the squares, divide by n minus one. I literally typed this whole thing in the calculator and it gave me this decimal. And then I just made sure to round to two decimal places. Similarly, for number nine, again, you can always pause this if you need to like dissect it a little bit further um, so that you comprehend what exactly is going on. But for X bar, I took the sum of all of these numbers and I got 144. And then since there were eight values, I divided by eight, that gave me the mean. Then I took 20 minus 18, 16 minus 18, and so on and so forth. And so I got these values, two, negative two, two, negative two, two, negative two, so on and so forth. I squared each one, added them all together, divided by n minus one. I literally typed that whole radical with the fraction inside in my calculator. And it gave me this decimal. And then I just made sure to round to two decimal places. So for number 10, it's a little bit more lengthy because they have three samples here. So it says compute the mean, the range, and standard deviation for the data items in each of the three samples. Then describe one way in which the samples are alike and one way in which they are different. So the first thing I did was I found the mean for each one of these samples. And so that is here by, represented by A bar, B bar, and C bar. So for A bar, I added these all together and I divided by the number of data, which was seven, and I got a mean of 42. Same thing for B, I added up all the data, divided by the number of data, and I got a mean of 42. I did the same thing for C and ended up with also 42, okay? Then what I did was I did each one of these data subtracted the mean. So 18 minus 42, is negative 24. 
Um, 26 minus 42 is negative 16. 34 minus 42 is negative 8. 42 minus 42 is 0, so on and so forth. I squared each one, added them up together, and divided by n minus 1. It resulted in this decimal. I rounded it to two places, so I ended up with 17.28. So I got a mean of 42 and a standard deviation of 17.28. For the range, I'm going to take the highest number minus the lowest number, which was 48. And it happens to be the same for sample B and sample C. So they all have a mean of 42. They all have a range of 48. Um, now moving on to getting the standard deviation of, of sample B. So now here I'm going to take all of these values and subtract 42. So we get negative 24 squared, negative 20 squared, negative 16 squared, 0, 16 squared, 20 squared, and 24 squared. Type that whole radical with the fraction in the calculator. We get this decimal, and that rounds to this um, 20.26. Finally, we're going to do the same thing for C. So 18 minus 42 is negative 24. Negative 24 again, negative 24 again. Zero, positive 24, positive 24, and positive 24. Squared each one, added all the results together, and divided by n minus 1. I typed all of that in a calculator, and I ended up with just 24. So the standard deviation there is just 24. There was no need to round in that situation. Now, in which of the following ways are the samples alike? They do, all three, have the same mean and the same range. And so that was what I selected there. And then in which ways are the following samples different? That would be the standard deviation. Each one of them has a completely different standard deviation. And so we selected standard deviation. That was probably the lengthiest problem out of the whole section, but let's keep going to get through these other um, five problems. So number 11 says, use the display of the data to find the standard deviation. So what I did is I took the graph and I put it in a chart. So my X, my, my data values are seven, eight, and nine. And then my frequencies are 10, five, and 10, or I'm sorry, not 10, 10 up here. So nine, five, and nine. So then I found their products. I found the sum of the products. I found the sum of the frequencies. So if I wanna find the mean, I have to take that sum of the products over the sum of the frequency, and the mean turns out to be eight. Then what I did was I took these data and I minus the eight and squared it. So seven minus eight is negative one, squared is positive one. 8 minus 8 is 0, squared is still 0. 9 minus 8 is 1, squared is still 1. Then I added all of these up together, and I am not sure what happened here. So this does not need to happen. Oh, yes, it does. No, it does not. So if we're finding our standard deviation, we're going to take the sum. Oh, I see. So when you're doing the weighted mean, there's a different formula. And this one is not represented on your note sheet, so you may want to add this one on your note sheet. When you're doing the frequency tables, you actually don't add up this sum you add up the sum times your frequency. So it would be, or times your score. So it would be that sum times F, since that's how many times that this value is going to appear. So this number doesn't appear just once in the total numerator, it's going to appear nine times. So instead of doing one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one nine times, you just multiply these two together and you get nine. You multiply those two together, you get zero. You multiply these two together, you get nine. 
And so when you take that sum, you actually end up with 18. So this is like this numerator here. So it's like you have one squared, one squared, one squared, one squared, nine of them, then zero, and then, or actually eight, five zeros, zero squared, zero squared, zero squared, so on and so forth. And then one squared, one squared, one squared, nine of them. Um, so we're shortening this whole numerator. So we ended up with 18 as our numerator. And then n minus one, remember the sum of the frequency is n, and if I take away one, I end up with 22. So if we do the square root of fraction 18 over 22, we end up with this decimal, and if we round it to the nearest hundredth, tenths, hundredths, um, this four will not change that um, zero. So it's just going to say 0 0.90. So this one was, a, was important because it was a little bit different. I didn't want to have to do a 1 squared or 1 plus 1 plus 1 nine times. So I just found this product. Okay, so this is a good example for number 11. Now, number 12 says, find the standard deviation for the group of data items. Now, this is in stem and leaves. My brain doesn't really cooperate well with stems and leaves. So what I personally do is I just write out the data. So for in this case, I wrote 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 all out. Then I was able to find the sum over the number of data to get the mean. Then I was able to find all the differences. So 15 minus 25 was negative 10, and I squared it. 20 minus 25 is negative 5, and I squared it. 25 minus 25 is zero, 30 minus 25 is five, 35 minus 25 is 10. Took the squares, added them all up together, divided by n, which was five minus one. I typed this whole thing in my calculator and I got this decimal and I rounded it to the two decimal places, which gave me 7.91. Similarly, I did the same thing for number 13, it's just different data. So here I took the lowest one, 26, then 27, 27, then 28 three times, then 30 twice, 31 once, and then 33. So I added them all together and I divided by the number of data, which was 10, and I got this as my mean. So I took 26 minus 28.8, got negative 2.8. I subtracted 28.8 to all of these and got all the values in the parentheses. I squared each value in the parentheses and add them all together divide by n minus 1, so 10 minus 1. I typed this whole radical and fraction in the calculator, and it gave me this decimal. And so then I rounded that to the nearest um, two decimal places. So this 9 will cause that 4 to go up to a 5. And so then the answer here is 2.15. OK, number 14. So number 14 says, the data sets give the number of platinum albums for the five male artists and the five female artists in a country with the most platinum albums through a recent year. Platinum albums sell 1 million units or more. Complete parts A through D below. So here we have the chart for the male artists with platinum albums and the female artists with platinum al albums. It says, without calculating, which data set has the greater mean number of platinum albums? Explain your answer. So if we look at these values, these values are higher generally than these. Every single one of these data is higher than these data, okay? So their number one, this number one is higher than this number one, and this number five is higher than that number five. So these guys are gonna have a higher mean. So for, and it just so happens that Option A says male artists have the greater mean number of platinum albums because all of the data items for the men are greater than the greatest data item for the women. And that is completely true. For part B, it says female have a greater mean number um, because all of the data items for the women are greater than the greatest data items for the men. And that's false. None of these guys are bigger than 145. For part C or for 
option C, it says FEMA artists have the greater mean um, because all of the data items for the women are less than the greater data for the men. But that would mean, that would not give females the greater mean. If all of their data is lesser than the men, that doesn't mean they have a greater mean. So that's why this one is not an option. And then option D says male artists have a greater mean um, because all of the data items for the men are less than the data items for the women. Well, one, that's not true. The data items for the men are not less than the data items for the women. And two, if they were, that would not mean that they have the greatest mean, okay? So this one's got two incorrect statements there. So that leaves us with the only true statement, which was option A. Now for part B, it says verify your conjecture from part A by calculating the mean for each of the data sets. So for the males, I added up all of the platinum albums divided by the number of artists, which were five, and I got 91.80. Similarly, we added up all of the platinum albums for the females and divided by the number of female artists, which was five, and we got a mean of 56. Now, it did say round to two decimal places as needed, so I did include the two decimals, even though this one had only one decimal and this one had none. Now, for part C, it says, without calculating, which data set has the greater standard deviation? Explain your answer. Remember what standard deviation is. It's how far away your numbers are from the, from the average, okay? And if you look at these numbers, those numbers are pretty close to 56. Whereas you look at these numbers, these numbers are a whole lot further away from 91 than these are away from 56. So looking at our options, we have option A, which says female artists have the greater standard deviation because there is a lower spread in the data. That's backwards. If it has a greater standard deviation, it should have a greater spread, okay? Um, Male artists have a greater stand variation because there is a lower spread. Again, these two statements are not true, okay? Now, these do have greater stand, a greater spread, right? Greater standard deviation, greater spread. So these two may make sense, but who are they talking about? It says here, female artists have the greater standard deviation because there is a greater spread, but that's not true. Their spread is shorter. Oh, it's closer to 56 then this one is to 91. So this is actually not true for female artists. For the male artists, it's true for the male artists. So, um, and then it says verify your conjecture from the standard deviation set. So for the males, I already found their mean, which is 91.8. So I took each one of these values and subtracted 91.8. And then I squared them all, added them together and divided by the five artists minus one, which was four. I typed in the whole thing with the fraction inside the radical and I got this decimal and rounded to two decimal places. We ended up with 33.55. Similarly, I did the same thing for the females. It just can't, I can't get the graph and the data in the same, value, in the same uh, window, but they're, mean was 56. So I took each one of these numbers and subtracted 56. Then all of those values I squared, added them together and divided by the five minus one, which was four. So make sure that your fraction is inside the radical and type it in the calculator. I got this decimal, rounded to two decimal places, gave me 7.38. Now number 15. So suppose a certain city's average monthly temperatures are as follows. Um, a, find the range. So the highest, which was 96, minus the lowest, which happens to be 39. So my range is 57. Then it says find the sample standard deviation. So first I had to add up all of the values and divide by the number of values, which was 12, and I got 75 as my, my mean. So I took each one of these values and subtracted 75. Then I squared each of those results, added them all together and divided by 12 minus one, which was 11. And I ended up with this decimal, rounded to one decimal place, left me at 17.6.
And that is now the end of 9.3. And so now the next video will be the test review. And I will see you guys in the next video.